We're trying to understand the basis for the resistance of leukemic patients, okay? There's a disease called acute lymphoblastic leukemia in which this disease is being treated by a major anchor drug known as methotrexate or MTX, a drug where uh, upon entry into the cancer cell, it which actually inhibit a very essential enzyme, and by doing so, the cancer cell will be deprived of its so-called DNA building blocks, and the cancer cells will die. The downside of this treatment is that frequently we find patients that do not respond to this treatment. We actually try to understand why these cancer cells became resistant, where other cells, other patients with leukemia can beautifully respond and be even cured. Our hypothesis was several fold. Maybe the entry into the cells is somehow inhibited or uh, decreased. So if a certain transporter that actually transports the drug into the cell is mutated or lost in function, of course there'll be no uh, entry into the cell of this drug and the absence of a drug that enters the cell, we will obviously get a resistance. On the other hand, upon entry in certain cancer cells, the entry of the anti-cancer drug into the cell still does not guarantee the killing effect of the drug because within the cell, certain mechanisms could occur that will actually abolish its activity. This drug, methotrexate, must undergo some very specific metabolism, and this metabolism is called polyglutamylation. Polyglutamylation is a process where this drug is actually being attached to a long tail of negative charges, and by doing so, the drug is retained within the cell. So the long tail will never let the drug out of the cell. It will remain in the cell, actually bind to the target enzyme, disrupt DNA synthesis, and kill the cell. It took a few years to pinpoint this mechanism and find out that this very specific enzyme, FPGS, so-called this metabolizing enzyme, completely lost the function in certain cancer patients due to a certain genetic alteration. So a large fraction of these leukemia patients, around 40% of these leukemic patients, do display this loss of function at the diagnosis. So much before we have even tried to treat them. It is a very essential information because we would like to pinpoint each cancer patient prior to the treatment and try to tailor or make chemotherapy to each individual per person. In other words, we're talking about personalized medicine. And using this platform that we have recently developed, okay, we're able now to, in a test that is in, actually done in a matter of two hours, definitely a few hours, take a small sample of leukemic cell from the patient. This is a simple blood test that we can actually uh, monitor the presence or the absence of this genetic defect in this very specific cancer cells. And I should mention, the non-malignant cells are absolutely fine. The defect is found not in the entire individual, but only in the leukemic cells. We can monitor this defect and tell at the time of diagnosis which drugs should be chosen for the specific patient. And that would be a major change. I think the simplest uh, comparison I could bring to laymen uh, is that when we go to the doctor and we have some throat infection, there always is a little swab is taken and a little analysis is made for bacterial growth and antibiotic sensitivity. And by doing this simple test, the doctor actually chooses the most effective antibiotic treatment for the specific bacteria that were found there. Certain breast cancer patients will develop or actually have even at time of diagnosis anti-cancer drug resistance phenomena. We try to understand the mechanism that is underlying this drug resistance phenomena to a certain drug, mitoxantron. Mitoxantron is a natural bluish anti-cancer drug that we can follow as a color in the cell. We knew that this drug actually 
with normal cells should be working perfectly right, but with these cancer cells, something happened that the drug no longer is effective. We discovered something very fascinating. The cancer cell actually internalizes the bluish drug, but an anti-cancer drug pump throw, expel the anti-cancer drug out of the cell. The entire drug is actually now in between cancer cells, concentrating it to tremendous amounts, which can be seen as a huge bluish color, and thereby the cancer cell is left with almost no anti-cancer drug and is resistant. When we explore this mechanism, it turned out that neighbor cancer cells actually form, if you want, a, a, a garbage can in between them. It's a certain vesicle, certain compartment, which is actually shared by several neighbor cancer cells. It's like they have a, like a brain of themselves, okay? And they say, if one can actually try to understand the logic, if a drug entered the cell and we try to expel it one on the other, we're neighbors, we're going to hurt one the other. Why not actually dispose it into a mutual site where it's actually a, a, a chamber in between us where the drug will be completely sequestered and out of reach of damage to our cancer cells. But the question is, how are we going to overcome it? Now, inhibitors of the pump have been developed which can actually pinpoint specifically the activity of this pump, actually completely jam it, inhibit the pumping, the vacuum cleaner activity of this pump protein, and by doing so, the drug is actually left within this cancer cell and actually causes a beautiful elimination, eradication of this cancer cell. We believe that one could actually tailor make this treatment again by saying that if a cancer patient from which we have taken a biopsy, let's say breast cancer biopsy, shows such a modality, we shouldn't be scared because if a blocking agent is present there, all we need to do is take the same chemotherapeutic regimen combination, so-called anti-cancer drug combination or cocktail of anti-cancer drug along with this blocker. So this blocker will block the activity of this uh, pump protein, or by doing so, all the anti-cancer drugs that should find their cellular, intracellular target in the cancer cells will do so and actually eradicate the tumor. A certain family of novel anti-cancer drugs has been discovered here in this lab that it actually targets beautifully a compartment in, in a cancer cell that is called lysosomes. Lysosomes is a compartment in the cell that is highly acidic and full of very toxic enzymes that will cleave a multitude of proteins, DNA, lipids, etc. So you want to have this compartment fully sealed and nothing leaking into the cell. We found something very exciting very recently that when you treat with this uh, family of anti-cancer drugs, some of them enter the lysosome and due to the acidity of this compartment, it's a pH 5.5, very acidic, these anti-cancer drugs are completely sequestered and concentrated into very high levels. And since they are photosensitive, by photoshining them, okay, let's say with a probe uh, into a certain uh, tissue, we can actually stereotactically come to the specific tissue, the tumor tissue, the malignant uh, uh, neoplasia, okay, and actually photoshine it. And what you see under the microscope and other certain experiments, whole tumor cells completely vanish in a matter of seconds, and that's largely due to the, if you want, the explosion of these lysosomes that explode due to the release of this reactive oxygen species, which lies the lysosomal membrane, and the entire content of all these very destructive enzymes now enter the inner side of this cancer cell and actually chew it up in a matter of seconds. And the amazing thing is that you can see malignant tissue 
that is vanishing in a matter of, of minutes and seconds. We're very excited about this recent project. It's in relatively early stage of the development and feel very much confidence about its ability to actually eradicate tumors.